Hello, I'm Andrew Lindsay of I Want Chaz, and we're going to answer some common Chaz questions now. I've got my colleague Stephen Smith here. Hello, Hello mate. And he's going to answer some of these questions we've got for you. So, why is it now that Chaz is being asked for? Well, the local governments have been asked by uh, the national government to, to put more money in, into, into the local business. Um, and to do that, what they need to do is actually check how good you are from a health and safety point of view. Um, if you remember years ago, they used to have a clerk who worked for you to come around and check all that. Now they've done away with that position and they want to know how good your business is through documentation, training records, etc. Um, Chaz has been going for quite a while, but because the government's put this emphasis on moving more money into local enterprise, so obviously Chaz has come to the fore. Uh, okay, so you've got a situation where, as a, a company, you can earn more, and because you can earn more, because they're pumping more into it, they expect a high level of qualification. Is that kind of what you're going Yeah, the, the safety side um, is, is criminal law. Um, and therefore, uh, local governments want to reduce their liability. And one way of doing that is to prove that you have the documentation in place to help them reduce their liability. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense then. Right, next question then. Um, why is my present health and safety documentation not good enough? Well, you as a business can do your own safety documentation. It doesn't mean to say that it will comply with regulation. Um, and uh, health and safety law is written uh, through regulation, it's very technical. So if you're a bricklayer and you go on the web and you download a risk assessment, that may have something in it for plastering, which mm -hmm. may, you may not do. Okay. Um, and so that would then, you know, make that document not fit for purpose. You need documentation specific to your business. Okay, but what happens if I've had documentation I don't know, five years ago and I had a health and safety guy in there and he helped me out? What, where well, well, things do change. And if you've got documents on there that are dated more than a year ago, that will be proof in itself that you haven't got proper documentation in place oh, right, because okay. they should be reviewed every year, really. And is that something that potentially could fail the chance qualification it for? It would definitely fail if it was over a year. Okay, well, that's interesting then. So, um, so what typical safety documentation do I actually need? Okay, so your, your business, let's take a, the brick layer again. So you need your policy for and simple health and safety policies based on brick lane. Um, that documentation would have his details in it, any first aiders in it, um, and then any other details to do with working at height or scaffold, your cot, mm -hmm. others to do, to do with cement, uh, risk assessment specific to brick lane, yep. um, and driving and, and, and uh, personal protective equipment. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then if he does renovation work as a bricklayer, he might need something on as in asbestos because you might go into an old building find asbestos. So this documentation is, is, is pretty specific in the CHAS process. Yep. Um, but you go through quite a system um, working at high asbestos, cost, right. arm vibration, and if you use jackhammers or mouldings or things like that. Um, and you need the documentation specific to, to that. Right, gotcha. That's fine. Last question then, um, and this gets asked so often. How long does it take for me to get CHAS qualified? Okay, so what you've got to remember, this is evidentiary. Yeah? So you're providing documentation to a guy who's probably in Glasgow, yeah, somewhere like that, away from you, who may be in London. He doesn't know your business at all, or you. All he's got is a, is a set criteria. Um, so if you've got training records, yeah, first aid, um, CFCS codes, things like that, great. If you haven't, you've got to go through that process. So that will elongate the process. If you, if you have documentation in place, up to four weeks, something like that. Yeah. If you haven't got documentation in place, then it can be four, six, eight weeks. But it, dep it depends right. really on how quick you can get that training into your company. And is that something that um, when somebody comes on to I Want Chaz and they use one of our providers, do they get some of that training? Is that, a, a, is that an after sale? What happens? Yeah, the, the training itself, we will, we will uh, once we've gone through the, the process of finding out what your business is by Skype or telephone or face-to-face -face meet, um, we'll, we'll turn around and give you some toolbox talks that you can do, but what we can't do is give you CSCS kind of training or first aid training. What we would do is we'd recommend that you get that from a local provider. It costs you less, you've got to travel, you haven't got to travel far, um, and you can get a decent rate as well. I'm with you, okay. All right, well, Steve, thank you for answering those questions. Um, if there's anything else you need to know, obviously uh, the phone number's coming up on the screen you see now. 
or if you fill in the form that you can see elsewhere on the site, then one of our guys will ring you back and take you through some of the other bits and pieces you may want to know about trans qualifications. So that's thanks from Andy from I Want Trans.